What's up y'all, Jay Maculate here. In today's video, I'll show you how to send MIDI notes from an external controller to your M8 using a USB connection. This works great if you have a device like a phone or a tablet that you want to use as a MIDI controller for your M8. But there are some limitations. Not all MIDI controllers that have a USB port can act as a USB host to facilitate the communication. Let's check it out. So let's talk about USB MIDI limitations. The M8 can't act as a USB MIDI host, so for USB MIDI to work, you need to connect the M8 to something that can act as a host, such as a computer or a phone or tablet. There is some standalone hardware that can act as a USB MIDI host, like modern MPCs or Teenage Engineering's OP series, but many devices don't have USB hosting capabilities. For example, here I have the Roland P6. Like the M8, the P6 is not able to act as a MIDI host, so when I have the USB-C cable connected from the M8 to the P6, the M8 doesn't see the notes I'm playing. But the TRS connection works great. So to demonstrate the USB MIDI capabilities, I'll connect the M8 to my old phone, which can act as a host device. And here I'm using Koala Sampler. And I recommend disabling USB charging on the M8 so your phone battery doesn't get drained while the USB cable is plugged in. To do this, turn the M8 off, then hold Shift and Option while powering the M8 back on. In this menu, change Disable Charging to On. This only affects charging behavior when the M8 is powered on, so no need to worry about your device dying and being unable to recharge if you have this setting enabled. Back to Koala, first I'll add a MIDI instrument by clicking the Samples text in the bottom right corner. Then from the More menu, I'll choose MIDI Out. When I select the MIDI Out instrument, I can choose what channel the MIDI notes will be sent on. So I'll set this to 4 for now. And then I'll switch to the Sequence tab to access the grid that I can play MIDI notes from. You can change the number of cells on the grid by pressing this gear icon in the bottom right corner. I'll set mine to 12. Back on the M8, I need to adjust some MIDI settings. I want to control a sampler instrument via MIDI. It's a slice drum break on instrument 01. So from the song page, press shift up to get to the project settings, then select MIDI settings. From here, I need to change the track MIDI input settings. These settings control what instrument is triggered by notes on the selected MIDI channel, and what track of the M8 that instrument will play from. The top row is the track number, and I want the drum break to play on track 1. So under the track 1 column, I'll change the channel to channel 4, same as the Koala channel, and I'll set the instrument to instrument 01. There are a few other settings here I'll talk about later. The only other one I want to change now is the mode in the bottom right corner. I'm going to change this to mono, but feel free to test other modes to see if they fit your use case. With that done, I can now press pads on Koala and the notes will be sent to the M8. Although we can't hear the slices play back, since the slices start at C1 on the keyboard, and the lowest note on this grid is C6. You can add a note offset that makes this C6 play as a C1 with a simple table configuration. From the instrument page, press shift and right to get to the table settings. From here, add a hop00 command to row 1 of fx column 1. And then in the end column, change the 00, 0 value on row 0 to C4, by holding edit and pressing down five times. This will change it so that when I press the pad for C6 on Koala, it plays five octaves lower, which would be C1. And now we can hear the note triggering the sampler instrument on the M8. Although as you can hear, the note will only play as long as I have the pad on Koala held down. To set up a more one-shot mode style playback, where the slice keeps playing after we let go of the key, go to the mod page of the instrument by holding shift and up from the instrument page. Then change the envelope to ADSR and max out the decay, sustain, and release parameters, and set the destination to volume. Now the chops will play all the way through. This configuration is useful if you plan on using an external sequencer to play the M8, as though it were a sound module. But there's also a way to record MIDI notes triggered from the external device into the M8's phrases. To do this, head back to the MIDI settings page from the project screen. 
The first important setting is the Rec Note channel. The MIDI channel you set here will pass notes to whatever track you currently have selected on the M8. By default, this is set to 9, so I'll change the channel of the MIDI out instrument on Koala to 9. And the instrument that these notes will control is whatever instrument you last selected from the phrase page. Back on the song page, as I move across the track columns and press pads on Koala, you can see the notes are getting sent to those tracks from the piano display on the far right. To actually add notes to the M8 sequencer, you have to enter the phrase page. Now when I press a pad on Koala, that note is written to the currently selected step. But the real fun is playing notes from the external controller while the M8 sequence is playing. This is basically a real-time recording method which will place the notes in the nearest row to where you last played them. Although the M8 sequencer doesn't have a very high resolution, and by default, these notes will be on the 16-step grid with no micro-timing. For more precise note placement, you can turn on the Rec Delay setting from the MIDI settings page. Setting this to delay will add a Dell FX command in the row that the note appears in, which places it closer to where you played the note from the external controller. Back to the phrase, now when I real-time record the notes from Koala, the notes fall closer to where I played them. And this also works if you combine it with the double BPM microtiming trick for increased tick resolution. So to do that, set the BPM to double what you have it currently. So I'll go from 84 to 168. Then set the group to 0C, which will give you 12 ticks per step instead of 6 ticks per step. So the tempo is twice as fast, but it'll still play like it's 84 BPM because of the groove settings. You can see some of the notes I played have Dell commands above 6, which means that it's placing the notes further from the step without being added to the next step. So those are the basics of USB MIDI on the Dirty Wave M8. With the right equipment or a device that can act as a USB MIDI host, you have plenty of options for expressive playback of the instruments on the M8, and you can even record notes from the external controller into the M8 sequencer. So there's plenty of configurations you can use to make it work for you. Well, that does it for this video. Thanks for watching, see you next time.